Well, hi there, food friends. It's Kevin. Hey there, I'm Ralph behind the camera. And welcome to Cavalcade of Food. And hi, Ralph. Hi. Say hi to our food friends. <laughs> hi, a food. Of, a lot of them ask about you. Hi, food friends. It's been a while, but I'm happy to be back. Yeah, we're happy to have you back. Ralph's always so busy. Um, but uh, we're glad that you can be here uh, this time, Ralph, to help out with the camera. So thank you for doing that. Yeah, I'm excited to see what you've got for us today. Well, you know what? Um, as our good friend Ed Love always says, I'm switching in the kitchen. Yeah. And that's what people do uh, the night before a big holiday meal. And in this case, we're getting ready for Easter and hosting family and friends here for a nice Easter celebration. Although, Ralph, our friends are not going to see this until after Easter. Our food friends. Our food friends. Um, but, so, you know, we're having a big spread of food, but uh, we're also going to have some starters, some nibbles, uh, as it were, and uh, uh, maybe some cocktails and other fun drinks before dinner. And I'm going to make a dip, an easy kind of put together dip and a lot of times uh, when you make dips Ralph I know dips that I've made in the past they've been sour cream based you open a powder packet of something and you mix it with some <laughs> sour cream and you're well like the onion soup mix the famous California dip that's mm. right uh, with sour cream but um, or sometimes dips are mayonnaise based mm -hmm. also this dip is going to be cream cheese based Ooh. So, I have two 8-ounce blocks of cream cheese here, which I took out of the fridge and sort of have let soften up a little bit. You know, take the chill off so that they're not rock hard. And then I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven green onions. Okay? These are green onions. Um, sometimes people call these scallions. But scallions are, and green onions are a little different in that scallions are a little bit younger. They're not um, as mature as a green onion. Green but, onions, courtesy of Booker T and the MGs. There you go. Yeah, great song. Are scallions a little more thinner? Yes, they'd be a little, a little skinnier. And, um, but some people also call them spring onions, uh, I have noticed. So... But um, these are green onions, okay? So what I'm going to do is I've trimmed the ends, and then you can see, Ralph, they have the root end on them. See that? See, it almost looks like a little paintbrush. You leave those uh, no, roots on? No, we're going to take those off. So we're going to take off our, our root end here, just trim those off, and... Put them aside, put them in your thing, uh, garbage, and then, or recycle, or compost. Then I'm going to just rough chop the rest of these green onions because we're using our friend, the food processor. So, Ralph, last week, um, or a couple weeks ago on Cavalcade of Food, I did a video on manual food processors and uh, food processors that are not electric, right? Right. But I'm going to do an episode on electric food processors, and I usually use one of my old Cuisinarts, but today I'm going to use a Sunbeam food processor. This is, check this out, Ralph, this is a Sunbeam Vista. And this is a food processor. Vintage 1974. Late 70s. 78. Um, it kind of has a smoky, like Cuisinart, smoky plastic uh, work bowl here. And uh, this is sort of modeled after Sunbeam also made something, a processor called a Le Chef. Mm. Okay, they wanted it to sound French because the Cuisinart was French. But this one isn't a Le Chef. This is um, a little 
different. This is a, uh, a Sunbeam Vista, just a food processor. So is a Cuisinart a type of? It's a food? brand. Oh, it's a brand. So maybe they thought Cuisinart made people queasy. <laughs> so they wanted to give it a more high class name. Like maybe they chef. did. So, all right, I'm going to put, um, and this dip, you could also make in a blender if you didn't have a mm. food processor. Interesting. So, but um, you're putting the chopped? I'm putting the, the green onions in, just rough chopped. And I'm also going to add a tablespoon of dill. Now, if you have access to fresh dill, by all means use it. I'm using dried, freeze-dried actually, because that's what I have. And dill's hard to find around here this time of year. I'll grow my own in the summertime in the herb garden. Okay, so let's put the lid on, and we're going to let our sunbeam processor do the kind of, I'm going to push this down. We're going to let it do the chopping for us, because that's why we have food processors. So in a blender, it'd be just a little messier, probably. Yeah, and it might take a little bit. It might take a little bit longer. Okay. All right. So we've got our dill and our green onions chopped up. Now we're going to put in this cream cheese. So... Whoop, I'm going to put in... Get in there, cream cheese. Get in there, cream cheese. So it's just been sitting at room temp all day, is that... Not all day, but uh, for, a I guess... A few hours. A, yeah, about an hour and a half. And we're going to... Just like when you make cream cheese frosting, um, you know, you have to have it soft the right so that it will mix. All right, I'm going to put our two blocks of cream cheese here and... I'm going to scrape the container. Good to the last scrape. All right. See, so I'm going to put in some seasonings. I've got a teaspoon of garlic powder here. Okay. We will sprinkle that in. And then I've got a half a teaspoon of salt and a quarter teaspoon of black pepper. And then I've got half of a lemon, this was a large lemon, half of it juiced. We're going to put that in there. We might need a little more lemon juice. I'm going to see. I don't th I don't like things especially, I love lemon, but we don't like it super it, lemon. Yeah, the right amount can really jazz something up, but too much can make it bitter. Yes. And now we're just going to let this machine do its do thing. Work. Do the heavy lifting. So, of course, again, this is going to be better after it's kind of sat in the fridge and had an opportunity to let these flavors kind of meld together. Let me scrape down. Oh, it's a beautiful green color. What's I'll, the texture I'll, like after? I'll show our friends. Well, it's very creamy, as you can imagine. But not liquefied. No. It's a heavier, thicker consistency than a sour cream dip. Okay. Good, because it'll stay on the chip better. It will stay on the chip, and you need a hearty chip. So this would be good with, uh, of course, a thick cut. Potato chip would be good with pita chips, would be good with any kind of vegetable. Uh, you could serve this. How about a corduroy chip? I mean, uh, a ripple chip. Yes. Didn't I say that? Yeah, that would be best, but yeah. I wanted to get that joke in there about okay. it being a corduroy. <laughs> All right. I'm going to give it one more mix here. So on top of the processor, you're also mixing it by hand just to make well, sure? Well, I'm just scraping the sides down. Oh, okay. Okay. There it is. So I'm going to, let's see, Ralph, if we can show, I'm going to tilt this up. And if you can get in here and zoom in and show our food friends that beautiful 
color. Now the camera's not maybe picking it up, but I can see with my real naked eye that it is a, like almost a pistachio, like even pistachio lighter, green. lighter than pistachio, but definitely a tint of green. But in the it, video, it looks a little. It less may green. be washed out from the 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 bright lights here, but um, and it's got a lot of green flecks in it, which is of course the um, the green onions yes. and the dill mixed in. It gives in. it like a little texture. And but take yeah. our word for it, this will be. A hit at a party, whether it's, you know, for all the people you're cooking for Easter or any party, because it's such an unusual and, I don't know, almost healthy looking color. Um, and, but what I'm going to do is, before I take it out of here, we're going to do a taste test. Okay. To see if we need to add anything, um, a little bit more lemon or any more seasoning. So I'm going to get some chips. Now, the thing I will say, because this is cream cheese, we're going to put this in the fridge and it's going to get... Harder, um, thicker. Hard again, just like cream cheese does, right? So when you serve it, make sure you take it out well in advance of serving it so that it softens up a little bit. Like a couple hours? Or? Well, not a couple hours, but I would take it out a good yep. half hour, 45 minutes. Oh, okay. Okay. All right, let me get some chips, and we will give this a taste. So, Ralph, I've got some nice pita chips here. We're going to... Uh, looks looks good. It's staying on the chip. Oh, yeah. That's for sure. What do you think of the lemon? Mm. Just enough to brighten it up, or is it kind of overpowering? No, I wouldn't. I'm not going to add any more lemon juice to it. But can you taste it? Yes. Um. Well, you know what. I'm going to reach and give Mr. Cameraman hands across the kitchen. Exactly. Mm. Oh, my God, that's so good. I tried it first without the chip just to taste the yeah. dip. And boy, it's so flavorful. I mean, so creamy. You don't think it needs any more lemon, do you? Mm -mm. You know, you're getting a, a hint of the dill, not mm -hmm. overpowering. The lemon is just kind of brightening it up. Yeah thing that really comes through a lot is the creaminess from, you know, using cream cheese as opposed to sour cream. Yes. And then the scallions or the green onions are yeah. very prominent, but, you know, just a, a, a beautiful balance. I like it. Yeah, me too. My new favorite dip, So other than you. <laughs> I knew he'd work that in somehow, folks. Mm. So... You can see, easy to make. And you could take this in different directions. If you wanted to add a little heat, mm. you could throw a little chopped pepper in there or mm. put a little couple of uh, shakes of cayenne pepper in there. Or even, uh, even like a fresh jalapeno. Yes, you could make it jalapeno. Uh, if you wanted other garden herbs, instead of the dill, you could use a... Um, uh, parsley, uh, thyme, or you could use parsley would be lovely. If you wanted to make it more exotic, maybe you could add a little curry powder. Right, you could. But I love it just like this. This I is a good, too. simple, effective balance. And it's really beautiful looking. It is. It's great. So, anyways, thank you for spending these minutes with us. I thought this would be also a fairly quick video. Um, uh, because it's just an easy recipe and it all comes together. Whether you have a vintage pro food processor or a new one, again, you could use your blender if you had a good blender, uh, certainly. And, you know, if you, if you wanted to do it old school, you could do this all by hand and just use that muscle. Hmm. Okay? No thanks. But with, you know, a few, a few food processors to choose from yeah you got a few i'm going this route yeah why not Anyways. use them if you got them and yeah we really appreciate people joining us for this cavalcade quickie yes and thank you ralph great to have you back oh, well thank you um for this episode and um everybody i will remind you the website is cavalcade of food dot com. com thank you ralph 
We'll ask our friends to subscribe if they haven't already. That helps the channel out. Share, like if you're so inclined. We love getting your feedback. And like we said, this is a dip that we hope you try because it's very, I don't know, just basic and universal and delicious. So um, until next time, happy spring, everyone. And uh, it's getting warmer here gradually in Michigan. Hope everything is well where you are, and we will see you again right here real soon on Cavalcade of Food. Spring Bye, forth everybody. Spring forth and multiply, everyone. <laughs> Bye. Bye.